I uh, am the grandson of a Japanese immigrant to the United States who came in 1905 in order to avoid being drafted into the Russo-Japanese War. Uh, so on my father's side, I'm a third generation uh, Japanese American. I was born in Chicago. Uh, however, uh, I grew up really in New York City. There was never much of a Japanese or Asian community at that time in the 1950s when I was a child. And I actually never really thought of myself particularly as, uh, uh, as Asian. Uh, and I would say that I always thought that the United States was a great country because you could call yourself an American uh, even if you uh, didn't look like a white American and nobody would laugh at you. And I thought that was actually something that was pretty uh, good about, uh, uh, about the United States. Well, my parents didn't speak Japanese uh, at home except when they wanted to hide something from me. And I didn't particularly want to learn either because it seemed to me that I was perfectly happy being an American. This all began to change, I think, in the 1960s when uh, you had a lot more ethnic consciousness growing uh, in many different groups where people wanted to hold on to their particular um, ancestral languages and ethnic identities, but that was really not part of you know, my own uh, personal experience. Uh, I'm not sure that it's related to my identity. It's kind of the stuff I do when I'm not writing books. Uh, the reason I like making furniture is that it's very tangible. So you, you make a chair and you can sit on it. You make a bed and you can sleep on it. it it's very uh, hard to really grasp, you know, what, <laughs> what it is I'm doing in the rest of my life. But with the furniture making, I say, okay, I'm making something beautiful. It's going to look good. We're going to use it. Uh, you know, we've used the dining room table I made for the last 20 years. And I think that's really satisfying. In the United States, because we've been diverse right from the beginning, uh, our national identity has really had to evolve into something much more political. And I think that that vision of a non-ethnic uh, identity, a non-ethnic, non-racial identity, has been key to the success of the United States as a democracy uh, ever since then. I think that identity politics carried to an extreme uh, is, is incredibly damaging and threatening to the possibility of democracy. Uh, the most extreme examples of identity politics in the world today are places like Syria or Afghanistan where there is no overarching national identity. You've got all of these sectarian groups that are fighting one another or ethnic groups that are fighting one another. Uh, and in the Syrian civil war, that's led to you know, half the population turning into refugees, fleeing the country uh, entirely. And that, I think, is what worries me about the direction. If we move in an identity direction, you know, that's the kind of uh, future that uh, other societies will face. The situation really varies according to country. If you look at the states of Western Europe, Germany, Britain, France, uh, the Netherlands, they have become de facto multicultural, meaning that they've got minority populations that don't look uh, the same as, as the traditional populations. They practice different religions in some cases. They have different you know, cultural values. And the issue for these countries, as for the United States, is how do we get all these people to live together in a single democratic political community? And that's why I think that everybody in some sense in a de facto multicultural setting like that really needs to move towards a sense of national identity that is based on um, political principles, enlightenment political principles, liberal political principles that uh, make the system accessible to everybody regardless of their skin color, ethnicity, culture, but also give them something on which they can agree. Um, uh, the basic political values of equality and freedom uh, and constitutional government that I think a modern democracy uh, is based on. So I think that's really the key to national identity uh, in the present uh, for countries you know, that have very different histories than the United States does.